The term bird brain has become more of a compliment than a derogatory remark these days than it was in the past. This is thanks to a growing body of research into the actual workings of the brains of our avian friends. We've come a long ways in our understanding of the avian brain, and lately, the last couple of months, quite a bit of new research has revealed some pretty interesting things, which I will share in this video. Enjoy! How Some Birds Ended Up Having Large Brains In April of this year, a study published online in the journal Current Biology has shown how some birds ended up with a large brain. You're probably thinking that their brains grew larger over time, but as an international team of evolutionary biologists and paleontologists have shown, that's not how it happened. The team of 37 scientists used CT scan data to create endocasts of hundreds of birds and dinosaurs. They studied these endocasts and combined it with a large existing database of brain measurements from modern birds. The brain measurements were analyzed along with body size to compare the scale of brain size to body size. This allowed researchers to create a timeline showing the change in bird brains over millions of years, which showed them that the brains of dinosaurs and birds were nearly identical. After the extinction, things get interesting though. With the big guys out of the way, it made room for smaller animals to take advantage of the new free space and birds apparently were some of the first animals to recover and repopulate the empty landscape. As they diversified and adapted in their new setting, some of the birds started out larger in size, and ended up over time shrinking their body size but kept the big brains of their larger ancestors. The researchers found at least seven brain body scaling events, the shrinking down of body size but keeping a large brain in birds right after the mass extinction. The largest brain leap, though, is seen in birds of today in the corvid family and parrots. So, in the case of birds, instead of growing larger brains, they shrunk their body sizes and kept the large brain of their ancestors. Pretty neat stuff. Bird brains are more human-like than we thought. For many, many years, neuroscientists tried understanding how it is that some birds with their small brains can do some pretty intelligent things. So naturally, they studied the anatomy of bird brains and compared them with the brains of mammals and primates. One very defining feature about mammals and primates is the cerebral cortex a region of the brain that allows us to solve problems, form memories, and carry out complex communication. In humans, this region of the brain is much larger than any other animal on this planet and is more complex. When it comes to birds, it had seemed on the surface that they didn't have a neocortex like us and other mammals, and yet they displayed a very high level of intelligence. In mammalian brains, the cerebral cortex is made up of six layers of nerve cells arranged in columns perpendicular to these layers. Whereas bird brains are made of clusters of nerve cells, neurons gathered together in discrete structures called nuclei. A long-held belief was that animals without a layered cortex could not be intelligent. For a long time, it was thought that this intelligent behavior exhibited by some birds was all instinctive. They weren't actually thinking. Recently, though, new research revealed that they do have a cortex and do think. Researchers used a new method, something called 3D Polarized Light Imaging, or 3D PLI for short. It's capable of displaying the orientation of individual nerve fibers. To the researchers' surprise, an analysis of the brains of various birds revealed an organization that is similar to that in the mammalian brain. Here, too, the fibers are arranged horizontally and vertically in the same way as in the neocortex. It just goes to show that there is much more than meets the eye, especially when it comes to complex brains. Not all highly intelligent brains look the same. Crows are capable of conscious thought. Probably one of the most interesting studies to be published this year is one that came out of Germany. 
Researchers did an experiment to test whether birds could have subjective experiences and tested it on two carrion crows. Since consciousness is difficult to pin down in animals that don't speak human, you may be wondering how they were able to do this. Well, the two crows were trained to respond to lights flashing on screens. If they saw the lights, they were to nod their heads. While most of the lights were easy to identify and report, some were harder as they were brief and faint. In these instances, the crows only reported seeing the signals some of the time, suggesting the possibility of subjective experience. Many sessions were done with something like 20,000 signals, and their brain activity was recorded via implanted electrodes. When the crows responded yes, neuronal activity was recorded in the interval between seeing the light and giving an answer. Meanwhile, when the answer was no, no neuronal activity was captured. The researchers said that the connection was strong enough to predict the crow's responses purely based on brain activity. Their findings confirm that subjective experiences are not exclusive to primate brains, and that other animals, namely crows, are also capable of primary consciousness. For people who've watched crows and other corvids like jays for many years, will likely say, well, I could have told you they were capable of conscious thought, but that holds no water without scientific evidence to back it up, unfortunately. Now that we know they are capable of primary consciousness, it raises the question on whether or not they also possess secondary consciousness. In other words, are they aware that they are aware? What do you think? And of the three new findings on bird brains, which one did you like the most? Comment below and let me know. For me, I loved all three. What a year for new understandings of our bird friends. If you'd like to read up more on these three studies about bird brains that was discovered over the course of this year, I will provide some links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks a big bunch for watching. Take care. Happy birding.